Welcome back to Honest News. You know, when the scripture says to earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints, that is not hyperbole. How many know that? That's not a figure of speech. There is a real attack today upon the one true faith to where they say there are many faiths. And then there are those that, in the word of faith movement, that are teaching what is not faith. This blab it, grab it. They use just enough of the word to bait the people only to get them on the hook so they can keep the paycheck coming. They're not interested in those people going to heaven. That's the last thing they care about. Years ago, I heard Kenneth Copeland for the first time. I had never heard him before. And he was with Jesse Duplantis, This was years ago, and I was listening, and the Lord spoke to me and said, do not follow their pernicious ways. If the blind leads the blind, they will both fall in the ditch. Are you listening? Let me tell you what the Lord said again. He said to me, Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity. Do not follow their pernicious ways. If the blind leads the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. So that's what the Lord thinks about Kenneth Copeland and the Word of Faith movement, Kenneth Hagin and all of that whole bunch. God says they're pernicious. The word pernicious has to do with being dangerous. Are you listening, people? Faith is not a mechanism or a method whereby we become rich. I may know that. Faith is putting your trust in God that you can't see. Are you listening? Faith is putting your trust in a God that you cannot see. Are you listening? You don't have to see it to believe it. So what did God give us until we have what we ask, until we have the actual physical substance? What did God give us? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. He's given us his word. Are you listening? He's given us his word, and he says his word is his promise. And God can't lie. Are you listening, people? The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. I don't have to see the result. I don't have to see the answer. 
to believe God. I simply take him at his word. So I hope by the end of this message today, you'll understand more clearly the origin of faith. Where did it come from? Amen. We'll be right back after this. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for divine truth. We thank you for giving to us the King James Version of the Bible. We understand, Lord, that we don't need any other translation. Just as faith is under attack, Lord, the Bible, Father, is under attack. Lord, we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Father in heaven, we understand that There are many, many different translations of the Bible today. And these deceivers, Lord, are using those translations. They say that the new translations are for those that don't understand in the natural mind. So there's a balance between the natural and the spiritual. But Father... Your word declares that the things that are spiritual are spiritually discerned. That the natural man cannot receive the things which are spiritual, neither can he know them. And Father in heaven, we have those today that are carnal-minded, fleshly-minded, trying to understand the Bible trying to twist the scriptures. But the Bible was never meant for the carnal or the fleshly minded. It was meant for the spiritual. Father, we pray that you will help us to deliver this message. We pray, Lord, that it will open the eyes of your people even more eyes of their understanding, Lord, will be opened, that they won't be duped, hoodwinked, or deceived by these deceivers in this hour, Lord, these ministers of Satan that transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Pray, Father, that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We begin in the in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter two and beginning with verse four. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. This is the Old Testament. I was looking for the word faith, not faithful. I wasn't looking for any other word. I was looking for the word faith in the Old Testament. And here it is. 
faith. The just shall live by his faith. That means when you are given faith, it becomes yours. And you're supposed to live by that. But where does faith come from? What is the origin of faith? Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Jesus says, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Jesus was always pointing to the Father. Are you listening? Luke chapter 8, verse 25. Remember now, Jesus said, Have faith. Faith in God. Now look at verse 25 of Luke chapter 8. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? He didn't say, Where is my faith? He said, Where is your faith? Are you listening? Now, if you look at the situation here, what's going on, you'll find that they were afraid. Let's read it. He said unto them, where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, what manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds. And the water, and they obey him. You look at the context, Jesus had fallen asleep on the ship, and a storm came, and he was sleeping through the storm. Are you listening? The storm didn't bother him a bit. It never woke him up. How many know it was they that woke him up? Now you're listening, people. The storm doesn't wake God up. The storm in your life does not wake God up to work on your behalf. Jesus is not going to speak peace to your storm until you, until you go to him. But there's something that Jesus was teaching here. They weren't to go to him. They were looking to Jesus to calm the storm. They woke him up so he could calm the storm. And Jesus said, where is your faith? So if Jesus is asking the question, where is your faith? That tells me faith comes from somewhere. There must be a source of faith. Luke chapter 17, verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as the grain of mustard seed, You might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Jesus 
still is not telling you and I in this message at this point, he's still not letting us know where does faith come from. He's just saying, have faith in God and asking the question, where is your faith? But he still has not told us where faith comes from, has he? So where does faith come from? If only a grain of the smallest seed of a mustard seed has such power, you would think that God's people would be interested in that. Only the measure of faith of a mustard seed, a grain of a mustard seed, And they weren't asking Jesus for faith. They were asking Jesus to increase their faith. And Jesus was teaching them that their faith would be in God. See, Jesus didn't want them to put their faith in him as a man. How many know Jesus Christ was not just a man? He's God in the flesh. And he didn't want them to put their trust in a man. He wanted them to put their trust in God. Anybody listening? Now you can look at the word faith and you could say faith is trust. But I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters. This is not just any trust. This is not just any faith. Listen to me. This is supernatural. This is not faith for the common man that people that are not saved, that are not believers, can operate in. Everything we receive from God is through faith. You cannot receive from God except through faith. But we still don't know where faith comes from. Where does faith come from? Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written... The just shall live by faith. So we realize that righteousness of God comes by faith. That the righteousness of God is revealed by faith. In fact, faith to faith. But we still don't know where faith comes from, do we? Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, just as if I had never done it. Are you listening? When you're justified by God, you're just as righteous as he is. He's giving you his righteousness. And it comes by faith. It's called forgiveness, brothers and sisters. You receive his righteousness. Are you listening? But this justification comes by faith. And because we're justified by faith, we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you listening? Now, don't, not only do we are, we, or we are we justified by faith and have peace with God, but look at verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
but we still don't know where faith comes from. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10 and verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then, so then, faith cometh. Faith. This is the first time we're finding out where faith comes from. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where does faith come from? Just open your Bible and read it, right? That's how faith comes. Or just go and listen to a false minister, a preacher, a, a, a false prophet. That's how faith comes. Right? People just go listen to Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland, and now they have more faith. Their faith has been increased after listening to him, right? That's not where faith comes from, people. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now, these two, word, these two words, hearing, are not the same Greek word. So then faith cometh by hearing the logos. Reading the scripture. But it doesn't leave us there. And hearing by the word of God. The second hearing in this verse is the Greek word rhema. It's the revealed word of God. Are you listening? You remember what Jesus said to Simon Peter? Whom do, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they began to give a, a list some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're one of the prophets. He says, but whom do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? Nobody said a word. And all of a sudden, Peter speaks up and says, you're the Christ of God. You are the Christ of God. You're the son of the living God. Where'd you get that, Peter? Did you read it somewhere? No. You're blessed. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal that unto you. My Father, which is in heaven, revealed that to you. Are you listening, people? Do you think that after that, their faith was increased? It should have been. It should have been. But we still see Simon Peter saying, I don't know the man. He denied he even knew Jesus. So that tells me that at the time that Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, he saw a glimpse. Are you listening? He got a revelation, but it wasn't enough. He only had a measure of faith from that. Are you listening, people? How did he get that measure of faith that he had after Jesus, uh, or excuse me, after the Father revealed who Jesus was? The Father spoke. Remember, Jesus said, 
The words I speak, they're not my words. See, Jesus didn't come into this world to, so we could put our trust in him. He came into this world to bring you and I to the Father. So that we could ask the Father ourselves. So that we could pray and ask the Father ourselves. Are you listening, people? A lot of people still today are still looking to Jesus. And he never told you and I to look to him. He constantly pointed to the Father. I hear people praying today. They don't pray to the Father. They pray to Jesus. Or they pray to the Holy Spirit. But they're not praying to the Father. And even the ones that do pray to the Father, many of them don't even know what they're praying. They're just praying it because the Scripture says to pray it. But they don't have a real relationship with God the Father through the Son. That's why Jesus came. To bring you and I to the Father. So that we would know the love of the Father, even as he knows the love of the Father. And that we would abide in his love. And that we would continue in his love. And Jesus said, this is the greatest commandment. Love. To love God with all your mind, your soul, with all your strength, with everything within you. Right? And to love your neighbor as yourself. Are you listening, people? See, the end goal is love. Love being perfected. That was Jesus' message. He said, they shall know you. The world will know you're mine. He'll know you are my disciples by your love that you have for one another. You got to understand just how dark and cold it was when Jesus was on the earth. And after he left the earth, how cold it was. Great persecution upon the church. There was hate and darkness and coldness. And in the midst of that, Jesus said, You love one another. You offer warmth. I want you to walk in my love and that you would burn in my love, not in lust like the world does, but in love, people. Praise the Lord. The only thing <clears throat> that Kenneth Copeland is concerned about is the money that's in those people's pockets that come to him and listen to him. That's all he cares about. Getting bigger jets. And then it's so sad because now these ministers compete against one another. They're constantly competing all the time. You got ministers right now, false ministers that are following Kenneth Copeland, young ministers that are trying to get their Learjet. And sad because even in the, uh, in the business world, even amongst those that are entrepreneurs and, and investors, they're chasing after the entrepreneurs that, that have the lair jet. How'd you get it? And those guys are charging tremendous amount of money so they can go to their classes. It's nothing but a pyramid scheme. Same thing with Kenneth Copeland. It's just a pyramid scheme. <clears throat> But how many know that Jesus does not want you to follow any man? In fact, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Paul was saying, if I stop following Christ, don't follow me anymore. Amen. Follow me as I follow Christ. And I'd say that to you, brothers and sisters. Follow me as I follow Christ. If you see me not following Christ, don't follow me no more. Because I just listened to a bunch of uh, ignorant people. Even though they knew Kenneth Copeland was lying to them, telling them that you, you'll never be perfect. 
Even though he just got done reading the scripture where the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, walk thou before me, be perfect. But see, God didn't say that to Abraham. He said it to Abram. And after God said that to Abram, Abram became Abraham. He was transformed. He was changed because the word changed him. You see, Kenneth Copeland, after reading that, said to the people, you'll never be perfect. And the people just reluctantly agreed with him because they didn't want to be in the group of other people saying they didn't agree. So they went along with it. And that's what's happening today. People are being hoodwinked. The end of the day, that's what Kenneth Copeland and those that follow Kenneth Copeland, really following Kenneth Hagin. At the end of the day, it's all about money. That's what it's about. It's about prosperity and wealth. It's not about the souls of men. It's not about salvation. It's not about eternal life. Are you listening? Jesus said to know the Father is to know eternal life. Jesus said that the Father will come and take up his abode in you through the power of the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. How many ministers do you hear today that are pointing you to the Father? That you might know the origin, that you might know the origin of your own very existence, where you came from. That you were created in God's image. In his likeness. And just in case you think God is just one person. Or that he is like the oneness believe. That Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the Old Testament, God said, let us make man in our own image. You know, I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, why is it so difficult for people to believe three persons in the Godhead, the Trinity, as some call it? Why is that so difficult? You know what the Lord said to me? He said, those that are truly mine, those that have truly been born again, They will not even question it. Just because my word says it, they'll accept it. He was helping me to understand that it's not something the finite mind can grasp. But why is it so difficult for us to believe that there are three persons in the Godhead? Why is it so difficult that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are one? Why is it so difficult for us to understand that one does not mean that they are all one person, but they are all one in unity? They are all one in nature. Why is that so difficult? There was a student when I was going to Bible school that was a oneness student, or one, a oneness, believed in oneness. Her family uh, raised her in, in oneness. And we were, we were all together students one day in the sanctuary of the church. And the, the Lord led me to give a scripture to her. And the scripture was, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And the, the Father, the Word, right? And the Holy Ghost. And uh, that night in the service, she stood up and testified. I thank God there are three persons in the Godhead. She was glorifying God of her understanding of what her family didn't understand, what she was raised to believe. What was it that caused her to understand that? Was it me? No. The Holy Spirit led me to give her a scripture that gave her understanding, that opened her eyes. 
Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, brothers and sisters. Are you listening? <clears throat> so understand that you're not going to receive faith if it's not from God. You may receive something that's called faith, or what people call faith, but it's not faith if it's not trust in the living God. Does that make sense? Not trust in a new age God, some other religion, some occult practice, but faith, trust, supernatural trust in the invisible God. Now, Jesus made it clear. He says, no man's ever seen the Father. No man's ever seen God. He said, but when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because Jesus Christ was the expressed image of the Father. The works that Jesus did were not his own works. It was the Father working through him. You see, the Father was revealing himself in his Son. How many know the, the Father wants to reveal himself today in you? How does he do that? Through his love, people. Through his love. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that's given unto us. Are you listening? <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. I love this chapter. Love it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. We know the origin of faith is God, right? We understand that it comes through hearing the revealed word of God, understanding his word. That's how faith comes. The origin is God. From the word of God. You don't have to see it, right? You don't have to see it to believe it if you have trust in God's word. He's given us his word. God is not a liar. And if you don't have your trust in God, you know what you're doing? You're calling him a liar. That's right. If you do not fully, completely trust in God, you're calling him a liar. Now, you may not fully be calling God a liar, but that makes you double-minded. And let him that is double-minded think he'll receive nothing from God. He's unstable in all his ways, right? That tells me that those that are double-minded need to grow in faith. Jesus said to some of his disciples that became apostles, he said, oh, ye of little faith. He said the generation he walked in was a faithless generation, a perverse generation, but a faithless generation. Jesus said when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? Paul, I believe it was, that he, he said not all men have faith. Not all men have faith. You ever heard the term used for a man of God? The man of faith. But today that's being used in a way to say that any man of faith can be any religion. But that's not biblical. A man of faith trusts God. Puts his trust in God. He takes God at his word. That's what makes him a man of faith. He doesn't doubt or question God. He just believes him. 
And that's inspiring to those that are not putting their trust in God. Or at least it should be. Amen. Praise the Lord. So faith is the substance. Well, Brother Joseph, I don't have it yet. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. If you've got his word. If you've got his word, you have that which you ask for. If God has given you his word, you have the substance. If God tells you something is going to transpire, he tells you he's going to do something, and you share that with others, and years go by and they're saying what you prayed about or what you said God told you he was going to do, he hasn't done it yet. Wait. Be patient. Wait. God's not finished yet. He's not finished. Just because God doesn't do it when you want him to do it. See, that's what happens. Like Abram and uh, Sarai. Yeah. Going to produce it on their own. It wasn't until after God said to Abram, walk thou before me, be perfect, that they got the promise. Are you listening? You and I, brothers and sisters, are not going to receive anything from God if we don't first receive it by his word. Are you listening? God always begins with the word. That's where faith comes from. Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. If God said it, that's enough. But make sure it's God. Make sure it's not your own thoughts. Make sure it's not the devil. Make sure it's God. If it's God, you know, listen, if it's God, it'll come to pass. Amen. If it's God, it'll come to pass. Praise the Lord. I will tell you, your, your trust in God will be tested. The testing of your faith will be, it'll be tested in the fire, people. You're going to keep believing God when he has given you his word? Amen. You say, Brother Joseph, you preach an overcoming message. You preach about deliverance from sin. You preach about how we're going to be perfect. But it hasn't happened yet. Wait. Be patient. Are you listening? He's not finished yet. He is not finished yet. He is perfecting. A people. In this hour. Those that take him at his word. Amen. That is one of the greatest attacks on faith in this hour is you can't be, you can't be perfect. You can't be perfect. Then they go the other extreme and they say, when you get saved, you get it all and you're already perfect. Now that's called Gnosticism. Nonsense. This is a process. 
right? It's a process. Did you know that every man that receives a word from God, every man is given a measure of faith? You couldn't even believe God for salvation if he did not give you a measure of faith, brothers and sisters. He has to give you a measure of faith to even get you started. That's why, Paul, I believe it was Paul, he, not all men have faith. Yeah, just because you're religious don't mean you have faith. Just because you go to church, just because you read your Bible doesn't mean you have faith. Have you ever read Hebrews chapter 11, brothers and sisters? Now that you understand where faith comes from, you understand that faith is only from God. It's, there's not many faiths. There's only one faith. Now let's see something. Because this oftentimes, Hebrews 11, is called the Hall of Faith. The world has what they call the Hall of Fame. But this is the Hall of Faith. For by it, the elders obtained a good report by faith. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He's not saying that God used faith to frame the worlds. He's not saying that God has to operate in faith. What he's saying is, through faith, we understand it. It's through faith that we understand that God created the worlds. It's through faith, through hearing his word and understanding his word, brothers and sisters, that we understand that he framed the worlds with his word so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Do you know what Kenneth Copeland teaches? He teaches his followers that you can speak things that are not as though they were. Yeah, that's what the serpent was teaching Eve and Adam in the garden. You shall be as gods. You shall be as God. You'll never be God, but you'll be like him. Because after all, we're all God. That's the teaching today. A universal Christ, a universal God. They were all God. In fact, you're, not only are we all God, but everything is God. Which is pantheism. But there's only one God in three persons. Are you listening? One God. In fact, in the Old Testament, God says, I don't know any other God. That's good enough for me. Did you know, brothers and sisters, Satan sucker punched me years ago when I first got saved. And you talk about hitting below the belt. That's what a sucker punch is. Well, it can also be just, you could take a sucker punch. In other words, when someone's not aware, they're going to be punched. It takes a bully and a coward to fight that way. Listen to me. This is what he hit me with. And I was staggering. Where'd God come from? Do you know the devil hit me with that fiery dart and I staggered for months? He doesn't stand a chance now. Where did God come from? Do you know what happens when you question or, or answer that question or try to answer that question? You end up questioning everything God says. But not only everything God says, you question everything. Everything. You become suspicious of everything. You have no trust at all. That's what, that's what science does. Science is the opposite 
of faith. Are you listening? The science of this world today is the opposite of faith. In fact, it's antichrist. It fights against the one true living God. Why is it so difficult for us to understand that faith is in the one true living God that exists in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? These three are in agreement. These three are one. They're not divided. They're not conflicted. And that same blessing, that same unity, that same bliss, where there's no division, no strife between the Godhead, God wants to give that to you and I. You know what that's called, brothers and sisters? It's called peace. It's called heaven. Are you listening? Did you know that God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they've never had a disagreement? Never. They've never disagreed. That's hard for our finite minds to grasp. God has never had a conflict in the Godhead. How beautiful. How beautiful. Now, of course, those that love strife, which comes from the flesh, they don't think that's beautiful. In fact, they're looking to bring strife. They're looking to find a way just how can I bring strife today? How can I get somebody upset today? Are you listening? I don't think there's any worse strife is when you're divided against yourself. When you're actually fighting against yourself. When you're conflicted within. Amen. Where you oppose yourself. That's really a depraved condition. When you're opposing your own self. Because when you're opposing yourself, you'll oppose everyone else too. If you don't have peace with God, if you, know, if you don't know you're accepted in the beloved, if you don't know you're accepted in his righteousness and you've been justified, you're going to go around trying to pick on everyone around you and you're going to be persecuted for righteousness. And they're going to look at you and they're going to say, you think you're always right. My Baptist brother says that to me all the time. You think you're always right. He, he always asks me this question. Do you ever sin? (laughs) I'm thinking to myself, is that the best you've got? And I'm only sharing that with you because to help you to understand, God's no respecter of persons, and we shouldn't be either. And if I have a brother that believes eternal security and he fights against me, Maybe some of you listening to me right now have the same situation. Maybe you got somebody in your family that says they're saved and they're fighting against you. You know what my brother said to me? He says, I don't mind having a relationship with you. He says, just don't share the Bible with me. And he tells me he's saved. He says, I've got my mentors. I've got teachers. I don't need you to teach me. So he wants me to leave Jesus behind whenever he and I have fellowship. Now tell me something, brothers and sisters. Does that sound like a brother in Christ? Does that sound like someone that's saved? Just leave Jesus out. No wonder it says Jesus is knocking at the door. If any man hear my voice and open the door. I will come in and to him and sup with him and he with me. He's knocking at the church door. The church as a whole won't listen. But if any man will open the door, 
Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, brothers and sisters. What's he going to sup with you with? The word. Divine truth. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Enoch walked with God. He was not for God took him. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Without faith it's impossible to please God. God is pleased when you put your trust in him, when you don't question him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. But if you'll take the time to read Hebrews chapter 11 and read all the way down through, through faith, by faith, through through faith, by faith, all the way down through, If you know what really what faith is and you read this chapter, you'll never be the same. You'll realize that what you need is not to find some teacher that is living wealthy, well, even worse than wealthy, like Kenneth Copeland. He's not wealthy, people. He's what the rich man in hell is was like fared sumptuously every day but if you think you got to align yourself with that you don't understand what faith is the scripture says god has chose the poor of this world rich in faith amen how about being rich toward god how about being rich in faith Silver and gold have I none, right? But such as I do have, give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Recently, they brought a sick person to Kenneth Copeland. He couldn't do anything for them. Are you listening? And he lied about it. This guy came up in a wheelchair and... Kenneth Copeland sent him on his way the way he came. He's a fraud, people. You would think a person that supposedly walks with God in that stature of wealth, in that following he has, that he would have the faith to get that man out of that wheelchair. Amen. Do you know what they do in Benny Hinn services? It's a total put on. It's a total fraud. They don't go get anybody that really has a real problem. Did you know that? I I was in a Benny Hinn service one time. And unfortunately asked him to pray for me. And all these people have fallen all over the place around me. And he's trying to push me. And when I wouldn't fall like everybody else was falling, he tried to force me. Pushing me over. Trying to push me down. And when he realized I was going to not go down, he walked away from me. I wasn't going to be part of his show. See, these people get under it. Did you know to believe a lie, you got to want to believe it? Oh, yeah. Many shall believe a lie. Well, you've got to want to believe a lie. Just like the whole deception of the UFOs. These people today that are going to believe that, they want to believe that. You won't believe a lie if you don't want to believe a lie, people. You, you've got to want to believe a lie. You've got to want to believe a delusion. And there are scores and scores of people in this hour that want to believe that there is a UFO or UFOs out there, that there is, there's aliens, <clears throat> that, they, that they want to believe that. Are you listening? I got to find out what that sound is. But they want to believe that. Are you listening, people? So remember that. 
that if you want to believe a lie, God will even help you believe a lie. That's what the scripture says. He says, if you want to believe a lie, I'll help you. I'll send you a strong delusion to help you believe a lie. Amen. I remember one time, and I wasn't going to say this, but I'll share this with you. I was asking the Lord one time. I said, Lord, would you help me to do this? And I remember what it was at the time. And the Lord said, I'll help you do whatever you want. And I said, really? Anything? Like, you know, I mean, there's people that believe God is their private genie. You anything, God? And you know what he said to me right after I said that to him? He said, yeah, I'll help you believe a lie, too. That got my attention. Don't play with me. Don't play games with me. I'll help you. But if you're not right, if your motive's not right, If you want to believe a lie, son, I'll help you believe a lie. Many have believed a lie and gone to hell. So I understood at that point, I better put on the brakes. And I better decide to desire what he desires, not what I desire. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. But when you get a chance, read Hebrews chapter 11. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. In fact, you'll come away from this chapter with more faith if you read it believing. You know, the scripture says because they did not mix faith with the word, it didn't benefit them. It didn't profit them. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11, verse 19. Thou will say then, The branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. How do you stand? By faith. How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Are you listening, people? You know, David didn't just go out on the battlefield and fight Goliath because he felt like it. Or because he thought he could overcome Goliath or he was putting on a show. The very words he said to Goliath, this day, God is going to give me your head. This day, he was prophesying to the giant. He was prophesying to Goliath what God had spoke to him. Are you listening? God spoke to David before David ever stepped on that battlefield. That's why he had the courage that he had to go up against Goliath when everybody else was afraid. He had a word, people. Are you listening? Dear God, that's what sets us apart, people. Do you have a word from God? Have you sought God? Do you have a word from God? I don't care if you've got cancer. I don't care if you've got, they're telling you you've got COVID. I don't care what it is. Get a word from God. His word will not return void. It'll accomplish where it was sent. His word will always supersede anything the devil does. Are you listening? You have a word from God and you believe that word. You have faith, people. Amen. That's what sets you apart from those that don't have faith. You have trust in a supernatural God, an invisible God that you cannot see, but you have his word. What is your word worth? When you say something, do you do what you say you're going to do? I told you years ago, my children used to try to get me to say, I promise. Come on, Dad, promise us. And I would never promise them. How did I know I could fulfill that promise? 
So I never was so presumptuous to say to them, I promise. I was tempted many, many times, but never gave in to the temptation because I didn't want them when they grew up to believe their dad was a liar. Are you listening, people? To this day, my daughter that's getting ready to graduate college, she still calls me for advice. When nobody else will, she's even turning away from her friends right now, she tells me. Because she said they just gossip all the time. They, and this is, she's only 21 years old, people. She says, Dad, all they do is gossip. She says, they don't, they don't, they're not real. But her and I, we can talk. Why? Because I never promised her something. I never lied to her. Think about that. There are parents that lie to their children. I have never lied to my children. Are you listening, people? And God's never lied to us. You have no reason to not put your trust in him. You have no reason to call God a liar. He's never lied. He can't lie. Glory to the Lamb. You might say I'm in the defense of the gospel today. Not that it needs defending. Praise the Lord. But I'm on the Lord's side. How about you? So we stand by faith. That's what sets us apart from the Jews. They were cut off because of unbelief. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. That doesn't mean that everybody on the earth has been given a measure of faith. That doesn't mean that those that don't believe have been given a measure of faith. What it means is, if you are saved, God had to give you a measure of faith to be saved. You have to have faith from God. It comes from God, people. That's the origin of faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith that comes from God, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you listening? It's impossible to please God without faith. Apart from faith. And how many know faith worketh by love? So if you say you're walking in love and you don't have faith in God, you're not walking in love and you're not walking in faith. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. This ought to sum it up for you. I am crucified with Christ, Paul says. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I... But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. The faith. What faith? Where did faith come from? Isn't Jesus Christ the Son of God? Is he not the Word? Faith Of the Son of God. In other words, Paul says the same trust that God the Son has in the Father. The same faith that Jesus Christ had in the Father. He says, I live by that. Did Jesus Christ ever question the Father? Even at Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Are you listening? 
He never questioned the Father. You and I can have that faith to where we become sons of God, not little babies and children, not carnally minded, not immature, but henceforth being no more children, let us go on to perfection, to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ, brothers and sisters, which is what the Bible calls the man-child in the book of Revelation that is caught up to God and to his throne. Glory to the Lamb. Some are growing in faith. Some are growing up to be like Jesus Christ and have that relationship that the Son of God has with the Father, bringing many sons to glory like his own Son. So we're supposed to be living by the faith of the Son of God. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 3 verse 22. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. The scripture hath concluded. So why go beyond the scripture? If the scripture has concluded, all are under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. What did Jesus say was the promise of the Father? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Not just being saved but being filled with the Spirit. That is our inheritance in Christ Jesus, to be filled with the Holy Ghost people. Glory to the Lamb. But before faith came, what did it say? But before faith came, listen to the Scripture. But before faith came, Before faith came, we were kept under the law before before faith came. How does faith come? By the word. That's why Abraham could walk by faith, because he had a word from God, people. Before faith came, though, we were kept under the law, condemned. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Are you still under the schoolmaster? Do you still need the law, people? Have you had enough of the salt yet? Have you drank enough from the living water that you don't need to go back? in sin, and go back under the law? The law is the salt that makes us thirst for the grace of God, the salvation of the Lord, the goodness of God, the acceptance of God. The law is a schoolmaster. The law was given for sinners, not for the righteous. It's our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. Not by works only. And not by faith only. Faith without works is dead. Justified by obedience, people. Obeying the gospel. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For you were children of God, By faith in Christ Jesus. Is that what it says? No, it says, 
You are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It's by faith. For as many as of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. He's not talking about water baptism. He's talking about baptism in the Holy Ghost. Are you listening? We're supposed to put on the Lord Jesus Christ through baptism of the Holy Ghost, people. Praise the Lord. And this is a good lead-in to the next message. We're going to be dealing with, in the future, much going to be dealing with being filled with the Spirit. Because so few are today. So few even understand about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's sad. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm not talking about water baptism. Remember when Paul came to those folks that had not been filled with the Holy Spirit? He says, what were you baptized to? They said, we were baptized to John's baptism. Paul's not talking about the baptism of water. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Mormons, the Catholic Church, you name it. They all talk about water baptism. It's not the water. Are you listening, people? There's no power in the water in this world. I don't care who prays over it. No such thing as holy water. It's the water of the washing of the water of the word that we're regenerated by. Are you listening? The same life that's in the word is in the spirit. It's the same spirit. We're baptized in the word. We're baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're baptized into God. Hallelujah. One God. And father of all. Who is above all. And through all. And in you all. No, no Pope. No Pope. Not in the world. Not in you all as all the world. As he'd like you to make make you believe. He's talking to believers. Believers. He's talking to those in the Ephesians church or those at Ephesus, the Ephesians. Are you listening? Ephesians, Philippians, these are are the letters that Paul wrote while he was in prison. These are not baby food. This is strong meat. Unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now you should understand where faith comes from. Maybe you didn't before. Praise the Lord. Now you know where to get it. Right? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get a word. Get a word. Peter didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word. He said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, come. Peter had a word. Amen. And that's what we need in this hour. We need the word. God bless you.